In this lesson, we'll look at what makes for writing style and writing tone. Everyone has a style that makes them unique. When you wear clothing that fits your personality, you feel comfortable and confident. Your writing also has a specific style that fits you. Have you ever read an email or a text from someone and thought, wow, I can sure tell who this is from. That's because of style and tone. As a writer, you need to learn to adapt to your purpose or writing assignment while still being true to your own unique voice. Let's look at three factors that will help you determine style. Purpose and audience, formality, and complexity. The most important factors affecting your writing style are purpose and audience. Some of the most common purposes or goals for writing include informing, persuading, reflecting, and entertaining. All writing can fit into one of these categories. Writing for school or work is often determined by instructions. If your professor asks you to write a research paper on, say, school reform, your purpose is to inform. If you have a boss who asks you to submit a, a business proposal to a potential client, your purpose is to both persuade and to inform. Once you've decided your purpose for writing, consider your audience. Audience is, of course, those who read your writing. This might include your professor, your peers, your friends, maybe even strangers. The tone or attitude you express in your writing should be appropriate for both your purpose and your audience. Let's discuss formality. Formality is that way text conforms to certain standards and formality affects your writing style. There's formal writing and there's informal writing. The table shows examples for the appropriate use of both styles. Formal writing reflects a consideration for the re respect that you have for your audience. For example, it wouldn't be constructive or wise to start an email with your or to your professor professor with, "Hey, Steve." Even in the rare occasion where the professor may be a friend of one of their students, in the academic setting, formality is always wise. On the other hand, informal writing frees the writer to be more carefree, such as in a blog post or a text message to a friend or a family member. Another element when considering formal versus informal writing is sentence structure. Formal writing requires more complex sentence structures. More time and effort in, is put into the formation of these sentences, and for good reason. They're written with an important objective. In addition, one should avoid the following with formal writing. Contractions, slang, cliches, idioms, and text speak like abbreviations, emoticons, etc. Let's finish our discussion about writing style by discussing complexity. Complexity doesn't have to mean complicated. Instead, complexity just means that your writing has a lot of connected parts. Sometimes complicated words are unavoidable. If you're writing about a topic that involves technical or academic terms, you may likely end up using words that you may not even fully grasp and will have to define or look up. But these words are there for a purpose. On the other hand, you don't want to use complicated words just because they seem, quote, smarter. In cases where students or just writers in general do this, the writing ends up sounding clunky, sometimes even incorrect in many places. Before you substitute a more complex word, ask yourself these questions. Would I ever use this word in normal conversation? Do I understand exactly what this word means? And does this word seem consistent with the rest of my writing? Can you think of a time when you had to give a family member or a friend some bad news? Probably were very careful to choose your words, your voice inflections, your expressions, maybe even your hand gestures. Now imagine that you had to share that same news in writing. How would you communicate your feelings in words only? 
Because you can't use gestures or facial expressions when you write, you have to use tone. Tone is the positive, negative, or neutral attitude that your writing expresses about a topic. We'll be discussing three aspects of using tone. Word choice, details, and inconsistent tone. First way to communicate tone is through word choice. All words have positive, negative, or neutral feelings attached to them. Consider the following three examples. The man returned her smile with a smile. The man returned her smile with a grin. The man returned her smile with a sigh. Each of the ending words, smile, grin, sigh, produces a slightly different tone than the other. As you write, you'll want to carefully select words that will accurately reflect the tone you want to communicate. Be careful if you decide to use words that communicate extremely positive or negative feelings, as this could make your audience believe that you're a biased or overly emotional author. Pause this video and read the following two paragraphs, then determine which one seems more reliable. Okay, in the first paragraph, the author chooses words that communicate an aggressive, disapproving, and almost angry tone. Not only does this type of writing hurt the credibility of the author, it could also anger the audience. The second paragraph does a much better job of communicating its message in a specific yet reasonable way. The details that you choose to include in or exclude from your writing also affects tone. As an author of any work, your job is to select the information that will fulfill your purpose with honesty and do so effectively. Consider the following three sentences. My cousin is a professor of astrophysics at MIT, one of the most prestigious schools in the country. My cousin is a professor. He dislikes his job because he's never been given a raise. My cousin is a professor of astrophysics at MIT. The first example has a positive tone because it includes certain details like the cousin's position and MIT's good reputation. The second sentence has a negative tone because it emphasizes the cousin's dissatisfaction with his job and doesn't mention that he teaches at an advanced subject or at an advanced uh, place called MIT. The third sentence is mostly neutral because the details aren't strongly positive or negative. Writing that is inconsistent in tone can come across as awkward. Think about the tone of the following example. Kim Quayle's essay, Wait for Nothing, expresses the author's experience as a listless child and a wayward young adult. She takes the reader on a journey that starts with a somewhat hopeless future, but is disrupted by an event that changes her life. According to Quayle, quote, it took me a while, but I finally learned that the life of quiet waiting is a life wasted. Quayle couldn't be more wrong because not everyone is given to such boisterous and dangerous ambition. The overall tone of this paragraph could be described as neutral. However, the last sentence includes words and details that are quite negative. This passage sounds awkward because the last sentence doesn't match the tone used throughout the rest of the paragraph. To identify a shift in tone, follow these steps. Read the text aloud to yourself. Decide if the overall tone is positive, negative, or neutral. Identify sentences that don't match the tone of the text. And look for words or details that could be altered or maybe even eliminated. In this lesson, we examined what makes writing style and writing tone. Thanks for listening.